If you'd like to follow along, you can go to Isaiah 58 Ministries dot blogspot dot com. The uh, title of the video, God to Liberate America from Central Banks, Our Own Monetary System. Now, to say monetary system is the wrong usage of the word of uh, the central banks played with our minds. Either you have gold coins or you have silver coins. And that's what you buy things with, and that's what you sell things with, and that's what other people buy things with, that's what other people sell things with. There is no such thing as a monetary system. If you hear the word monetary system, I put it up here because people understand this, but there's no such thing as a monetary system. You either have the gold, or you have the silver, or you don't, and you're trying to steal from somebody somewhere. It's just a con. Con artists use words to manipulate people. But just like the Bible says, in the beginning God made a male and female. And the reason is for procreation. God also said he made gold and silver coins. And that is how you buy and sell with. It's been done that way for, since the beginning of creation. God created gold. He created silver for money. You can look at history. History is an authoritative speaker. It screams loudly. Every king has had his um, treasury of gold and silver and jewels. And there's not a kingdom has not used gold and silver coins. I don't care what country you go to. That's what is money. There is no other you're lying to yourself or you've been lied to and you're repeating other people's lies. God didn't tell you that and God is the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth will tell you if you don't have the silver in your hand, if you don't have gold in your hand, you have no kingdom, you have no country, you have no... Um, the best word is kingdom. Every kingdom, and Jesus came to bring us God's kingdom, and that's why God wrote the Constitution Declaration with the Holy Spirit and said you can only use gold and silver coins because God knows there's counterfeiters out there. He knows there's con artists out there. He's going to trick you, and he knows there's alchemists out there. Um, it's fool's gold. So when you get paper, you're getting fool's gold. When you get anything that isn't gold and silver in your hands... Let's say you got a mortgage. Well, did you see any gold or silver? No, you didn't. So it's all in your imagination. You didn't pay for anything. I'm sorry to tell you. It's just the truth. And this is, uh, we seek the truth. Because the truth will set you free. And it's in your mind. The most important gift from God is the mind. And if you don't have that truth in your mind... You're lost. The Bible says their, their minds are lost. They're wandering out there in space. And people come up with these crazy imaginations. You can believe Darwinism because your mind is lost. That's evolution. Or survival of the fittest. The strongest and the most powerful are the uh, tyrants or dictators. The one with the biggest armor. The one with the biggest weapon. But when you have God and you have Jesus, then you have the biggest weapon. You have God himself within you. The ruler who created all of this. And Jesus came to bring his kingdom, his power, his authority. Lord, we just lift up this to you, Lord. And may you um, open the eyes of the hearers and open my ears to hear you and May you be that great, wonderful teacher, our liberator. God, liberate America from the central banks. God, liberate America from these con artists. I pray in, in your precious holy name, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. May we see your work, good works be done, minds liberated and set free, to hope of our calling to witness 
your kingdom on this earth. We have the Coinage Act of 1792 for America. And it states right there what a gold coin is and what a silver coin is and the value of it. And we have to hold tight to that kingdom. See, Jesus came and was born. And we, if you know the Christmas story, three wise men or three kings came and paid tribute to Jesus as God, as king, as Lord of lords and kings of kings. And they gave him gold. And God brought the wise men or the kings to him. And God established Jesus as a king by giving him gold. And there Jesus has a treasury. You can't have a kingdom without a treasury of gold and silver. And then he had frankincense and mirth, both healing properties for your body. So God established that Jesus was a king and he had a kingdom and he came to bring healing. And what we do is we repent and we confess that we didn't know that we had to have gold. We didn't know we had to have silver. God forgive us. Uh, give us the gold we need and the silver we need that we might use it, Lord. <laughs> and establish your kingdom in our lives. So each of us has our own gold and our own silver. And that's why the Founding Fathers wrote the, the uh, Coinage Act of 1792. It's about America being established as a kingdom. On this earth, a country and nation is a kingdom. And God established it by giving us a mint where we make our own money. And everybody in America can vouch before God that their money is fair. It's just. The Bible tells us all to obey God and have um, just weights and balances. And so in order to have just weights and balances... Everybody's gold and everybody's silver has to be the ex exact. And so a dollar is silver. It's not paper. It's not a check. It's not a credit card. It's not a mortgage. It's really silver that you must see with your eyes and feel with your hands. And if you rub it and you touch it, it it's health to your body. And not only is it health to your body, but it's health to your mind because every constitution says everybody has a right to have a clean conscience. When you use silver and you know you did it according to the Coinage Act, it's not counterfeited, it's not paper, it's not plastic, it's not credit, then you have a clean conscience. And with a clean conscience, you're healthy. And you have this peace. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. So then you have this peace that's real, that you can feel in your soul. And it just, it, it's a gift from God. This peace is a gift. It's a spirit. The Holy Spirit brings this peace. That's why Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And you can feel that peace. And then once you have it, you can share that peace with other people so they can have peace in their minds. And they just have to do what you did and call it to God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. God, I pray for the gold I need, the silver I need. No one can do anything good, like have good, fair money, goods, without God helping them. We all need God. God to God be all the glory, for all men without God are um, lost. You can't do anything without God, and that's why we pray when we started. God, help us do the right thing. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had God in them, with them, walking with them. They were whole human beings. Their spirit was the spirit of God in them. They were children of God, saints on this earth. And then we know Adam, um, Adam and Eve fell and they lost that spirit. They lost God that was in them, the knowledge of God. And they lost their um, clean conscience. And they felt naked and ashamed because they had done wrong. Every child who... Let's say you steal a cookie or something, then you have a conscience that, oh my gosh, you know I did something wrong. And so when they did something wrong, they disobeyed God, then they had a, their conscience weighed on them. It took another 4,000 years for Jesus to die for them to have a clean conscience. But the Lord gave them peace and he gave them clothing. The Bible says he made clothing for them. 
And so they could go on living in life and in peace and have an anointing. But the Spirit wasn't there anymore. The Holy Spirit. And so we ask God to forgive us. And then remember that when Jesus died, we die with him. And so we receive our punishment with Christ. He was God. Only God could go to the cross and take all the punishment of all the world on himself. And because he's God. <laughs> he's the only one who could do this. The Bible talks about in the book of Revelations how who's worthy to open the seal. So on the cross, Jesus is opening all these seals because he's the only one worthy. He's the only one can do all this and go through all this that we read in the book of Revelations. And then we die with Jesus on the cross with Jesus. We suffer. We take those beatings. And then we, we go to the grave with Jesus. But then we come back up. It says when we are baptized with water because after you accept Jesus as Savior, baptism is a sign that you acknowledge the fact that you had to go with Jesus to the cross and receive that beating and receive um, the death on the cross. We had to die to ourselves. We no longer live for ourselves, but the life we live, we live with Christ living through us for God, for Jesus. We're witnesses for Jesus now. And in baptism, we show that, yes, we died to ourselves and then we come back alive when we come back out of the water in baptism. And when Jesus came back to life, he received, again, the spirit of life. And we received the Holy Spirit. And that brings us back to life. And then you're born all over again. Because when you're born, you're born, it's all about yourself. A baby. That's why you go through terrible twos and terrible threes. And hopefully in that time period, you have a baptism or you, know, you learn about Jesus so you can uh, live a sinless life and you, your parents should raise you when you go through the twos and the threes, change from a sinner to a saint and then you're born and you f you're filled with love and power of God and you become a saint. And I'm saying this from personal experience. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened to me when I was two or three years old. Now I have siblings who didn't make it through two and three years old. And they still are there, selfish in two and three years old mindset of it's all about me, 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 me. What about me? Whereas I've had the Holy Spirit ever since then. And so I wanted God's will done, not my will, but God's will done. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Again, if you go to the description on the Rumble channel, you um, see the, this, this page, Isaiah 58 Ministries. God Delivery America from Central Banks. Um, you can click on that link and just read along. What I do is I, as this started like I said, November 7th or no, actually in the 4th, I just get something from the Lord. I just write it down and get it and I'll write it down. And usually I put it in post on Minds and uh, gosh, uh, Brighton has one, social groups and Bless to Teach has one, and Josh Hu has one called Loop. Um, we we're, we go. There's Anon. I go to all these different kind of social groups, and of course Gab and MeWe, and I go to all these social groups, and I'll put my thoughts there, because Per America needs to hear from somebody living today. To know what the founding fathers knew, it's the Holy Spirit. Every word you read from them is from the Holy Spirit. I'm looking right at a picture, it says Patrick um, Henry. The Bible is worth all the books that ever have been printed. Um, I'm looking at John Adams. What's that say here? 1776. Statesmen may plan and speculate for liberty. But it is religion and morality alone which can establish the principles upon which freedom can securely stand. George Washington, April 30th, 1789. We ought to be no less persuaded that the oh, propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right 
which heaven itself ordained. Now, how many did you? Uh, how many teachers did you have, or parents taught you that there are eternal rules of order and right? Because he's saying, how can you expect the blessing of God if you disregard those eternal rules and order and law, <laughs> order and right? They are ordained by God. So these are important things. So that's why I pray that when I bring words, it won't be me. It'll be the Holy Spirit. And where did George Washington learn that there are eternal rules of order and right? From the Holy Spirit. God himself taught George Washington what to say. Remember I just said Jesus died and we die with him on the cross. We died ourselves. We no longer live for ourselves, but we live for Jesus Christ. And we allow him to speak through us. And so George Washington, John Adams, Patrick Henry, they were letting God's wisdom come to their tongues and they spoke it forth to teach and to admonish people so that we all live in peace, have peace in our souls that comes through Jesus Christ. And we have live in peace with one another. And we don't have all this greed and con artists that your monetary system is nothing more than a bunch of evil people who never went through the two and threes. You know, there's the terrible twos and terrible threes. They never went through it correctly. Being um, disciplined with the Holy Spirit. So they've stayed at two or three years old. And it's all about me, 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 me. They never grew up. They never matured. And so hopefully through this blog, your eyes will be open. You'll be set more free and you'll have more peace. Hopefully, I'll share Jesus give me peace. I'll share his peace with you. So you understand. I just saw Leah and Michelle show from today. And they're like 4,000 men in England. I'm like, okay. So these men at any time can be given all these weapons. And they'll wipe out all the people in England. I mean, there's going to be a mass murder of all these people. And I'm like, God, what, I, what can I say? What can I You're going to have to speak. And give British people hope that you have given them power, especially over all these people from under foreigners. They're trespassers. They're in sin. They're disobeying God. They're disregarding the eternal law rules of order and right, which heaven itself ordained. You know, they're the ones who are in breaking the law, the laws of God. And I'm like, God, what can I say? God gives us power and authority to cause those people to repent of their sins, turn to God, and go back home. And know they are trespassing. They have no right to be there. And you'll know that you're doing the right thing because you know that you have the right to stand up for yourself, defend yourself, defend your country, defend your nation against trespassers. And to uh, deal with those government officials who are not doing that. They're not really government officials. They're actually, I'm not doing, I'm not on YouTube. That's right. They're committing treason. They're inviting a foreign army into your into Britain with all these men. And they have plans to doing this mass murder against the British people. And to replace the, the real people who have the land and give it to somebody else, but they're not God. And so the British people have to turn to God. And know God loves them. And die with Jesus. Come back to life with Jesus. Get baptized. And filled with wisdom from God. So they might stand and defend themselves. And defend their fellow men. And walk in the covenant that God has for them. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. And how to can't, Well, I ask God to give me something to say before I get started. So... You could say, and, and Tucker Carlson and Ingram Angle and stuff, they give a monod monologue at the beginning. So you could say that was my monologue. <laughs> God did liberate America from central banks, our own monetary system, which is just plain old gold and silver that every kingdom on this earth must have a treasury of gold and silver. Every citizen, God made every citizen a king. And the Ten Commandments is... Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. 
and then don't have idols, um, obey the Sabbath, but it also says, honor your father and mother. God has given mothers and fathers power and authority in their families, but you have equal power with and authority with everybody else in your country who um, has become an adult. But that power and authority must come from submission to Jesus, the King. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he spoke to us by his son, Jesus. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. So we are to listen to Jesus. Unlock the treasure within you is what I called the video. And that's what I'm trying to do by the spoken word. Full with the wisdom that comes from heaven. PG, Patrick Alley. Uh, I received some new revelation from the Lord. The book of Revelation means nothing can harm you. That was the revelation. That nothing can harm you. There was a man named John who wrote the book of Revelations, and nothing could kill him. Nothing could kill John on the island of Patmos because Jesus Christ had been revealed to John. So I pray that God reveals himself to you. Once Jesus has been revealed to you, nothing can harm you. He recounts Jesus being revealed to him. They could not kill him. So you read the book of Revelation, it's, it's Jesus Christ being revealed to John. And he's writing this down. He's getting this from God. Jesus is revealing himself. This seal's broken. This seal's broken. Oh my gosh, who's worthy to break the seal? Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, broke all those seals because he is God. He's the only one who could take the beatings. He was whipped on his back to where his body was broken. And Jesus said, do this remembrance of me. Take the bread and break it. You're to you yourself. You're supposed to take the bread and break it and remember Jesus' body being broken from all these beatings and the the uh, false crown of thorns they put on his head. And then they he went to the cross and bled to death on the cross and was suffocated. So Jesus did all this, but only he could do that. He was taking all the sin of all the world from Adam on himself. Nobody else could do that but God. Okay? And that's being revealed to John, what Jesus, who he is, what, what he's done for us all. And so they could not kill John because in Christ, all our punishment is in that act on the cross. And so then we can't be punished anymore. We can't suffer. We can't be harmed. We can't be hurt because Jesus took all the pain and suffering on himself. They couldn't even kill John they tried to kill him, boiled him in oil or something, and they couldn't kill him because he knew nothing could harm him. George Washington had bullets going through his jacket. It's, I mean, he should have died. He had six or, I don't know, this, I heard just different recounts of the story, but five or six uh, bullets. He had horses sh shot out from under him. George Washington knew nothing could harm him. So you meditate what Jesus did. God himself in his son, Jesus. What he did for us. Nothing can harm you. And that's what the, John is getting this. He's telling you what's going on in the spiritual. And this war that's going on. And, and all the fighting and everything. It's what Jesus did with the cross. And, and through um, the battle was with the devil. With the beast. And with the whore and stuff. And so this is the battle that Jesus went through. Only God could defeat the devil. Okay. So um, the word of God was open to him. And he understood the words of God written in the Old Testament. There was no New Testament. So the Old Testament was being revealed to John. God had filled John with oil. And he became a lantern. He became a fire. He became the light of God. He was full of power, love and power by God's Holy Spirit. And, and John was realizing, God, that did this on the cross is in me. So nothing can harm me. See, they couldn't harm Jesus. He took all that sin on himself. He still came back to life. 
it killed his physical body, but then he got the body back. Nothing could harm him. Death could not harm Jesus Christ. He laid down his life. He laid down his physical body for us. And so we die with him and come back to life with him. And so you want this revelation of becoming a fire um, and, and being filled with oil. It's, it's uh, called the anointing. And in the Old Testament, if you look at it, people are, have oil poured on their heads. And that's the anointing. That's the fire of God. So you become the light of God on this earth. And when they were in the upper room in the New Testament, there was a bunch of people together for people who haven't read the Bible. And they're waiting. They're waiting because Jesus said, wait in this upper room until you receive the Holy Spirit. And John the Baptist, when Jesus would be in baptism, he's saying, lo, the Son of God who comes and takes the sins of the world. He's saying he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but with fire. And then nothing can harm you. And you know that you have died. But now God has given you a power, authority, his peace, his love. And you are now to be a fire or a light of God's love to people around you. And you are connected to God by knowing and seeing within you the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is the very spirit of God in you. So, good evening. I wrote this one first and I add that on top of it. Good evening, America must repent of the Industrial Revolution. It was sin. The sin of the Industrial Revolution was witchcraft, wizardry. The love of money is the root of these occults, this evil. The Federal Reserve and use our own money, the Coinage Act 1792. This witchcraft and wizardry could you it was tried to destroy the coinage act we're using alchemy they were trying to debase real gold and silver coins if you read amos 8 it's all about deba debasing the value of using gold and silver coins and they thoroughly did a job but see that fire is still in you god is still in you you're born in america you have this fire in you <coughs> You were born in a free country, and we have a covenant with God. So this is in you. They had to put you through 12, 13, if you went to college, 15 years of brainwashing and using their fake alchemy, their um, fool's gold, which your paper and your mortgage, that's all fool's gold. It's not real gold and silver. You had never saw any gold and silver, so it was all, you were, you became the fool. Sorry. <laughs> Anything the Federal Reserve came up with or your government came up with that isn't real gold and so it's fool's gold and they made a fool of us all. But we can redeem all that and go, God, I'm sorry. We need to repent of the Industrial Revolution, that alchemy, that witchcraft, that wizardry. In order to do the Industrial Revolution, they had to make everybody in America a slave. Go to a job, work at a factory, uh, get electricity, get telephones. Instead of living free on the land on farming, like I said on YouTube, they gave us a strike because they don't want you on the land. They don't want you independent. They need workers. And President Trump, all these people call you workers. That's the biggest insult. That means you're our slaves. When they say the workers, they mean the slaves. And they're above you and they're elite. That's where you get first class, second class, third class, and stuff like that. It's slavery. But if you read Amos, they say, we're going to change the value of the gold and the silver. And uh, we're going to make slaves out of people using the silver. And so they kept debasing the silver and debasing the silver. Because ordinary people don't need more than some silver. It's, it's not a lot. I mean, gold. And then they kept raising the price of gold and making the gold so much. And so we have to get back to close relationship with God. He'll give us the right value of gold and silver. James 5. Once we repent, um, I'll bring that up here so you can read it with me. Remember Amos 8.
Thus said the Lord God, show unto me, um, behold, a basket of sour fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of sour fruit. Then said the Lord, the Lord is teaching him the con. And now he's teaching you the con. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. The songs of the temple shall be howlings in the day, said the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place, and they shall cast them forth in silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make poor of the land to fail, saying, When the new moon has be gone, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath when will it be over, that we may set forth wheat, and making the aphid small, that's the silver, aphid is silver, small, and the shekel, that's the gold, great. Now, even when writing this is uh, King James, they took out, they didn't put in their uh, modern day word for silver, and modern day word for, because the aphid is silver, and the shekel is gold. So, these criminals, they want to make the silver small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit that we might buy the poor for silver that put you into slavery and the needy for a pair of shoes. Yea, and sell the refuge of the weak. wheat. The Lord is sworn by his excellence of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their works and shall not the land tremble for this and everyone mourn that dwell therein and it shall rise up whole holy as a flood and it shall be cast down and drowned as by the flood of Egypt and one thing for the last hundred years since they started playing with the money and doing this debasing the gold and silver the one thing that men thirst for behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in a land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. We haven't heard, like in the, when our country was founded, everybody knew the Bible, everybody talked the Bible. It was all about the Bible. It was all about the word of God. It was all, God said this, God said that, God said, it was all about the Bible. And children at three years old were memorizing chapters of the Bible. A lot of your countries, like in, um, I think in England, you have to take Bible courses and learn the Bible. But it's no good without the Holy Spirit. And so they take the word of God from your mouth and put it with their lies. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And in that day shall the fair virgins, the young men, fate for thirst. So that's what's been happening for the last hundred years. That's what happens when these evil men set to debase the gold and the silver. Well, they, de yeah, that's right. The value of it. Um, they that swear by the sin of Samaria, saith the Lord, and say, the God of Dan liveth, and the manor of Bathsheba liveth. Even they shall fall and never rise again. So G God's saying, these guys are going to fall. It'll be quick, it'll be sharp, and you'll never see him ever again. Once we realize the game that's foot, we can correct it because we have nothing to harm us. We have Jesus in us. So then I want to read James 5. I'm going to these scriptures because usually I wouldn't do this because people who watch me on YouTube, I've said this for three years four years over and over again it's always the same scriptures and everything but i'm for the people who are new to me on rumble this is my first time here live on rumble i want to make sure we lay a foundation of this is the very words of god we don't thirst for the word of god or for the understanding the spirit is with us and we're going to destroy these mighty ones and they're giants on this land but we can take them down because god is in us his power resides in us so James 5, it says, Go now, ye, re ye rich men, weep and howl, for your misery shall come upon you. Your riches, your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered, 
and the rest of them shall be a witness against you. That means it's, it's fool's gold, it's counterfeited money. So when your gold and silver isn't solid gold and solid silver, it's going to rust. It's going to be corrupted. It's going to be corroded. It's going to be cankered. And that's the witness against them. And shall eat your flesh as it were a fire. Because they're going to we together are going victim. And they're going to feel the weight of what wrong they have done. And it'll burn within them and burn them like fire. You have heaped treasure for together. For they, it's a conspiracy. Okay. You have heaped treasure together. They, they've they been stealing and stealing and stealing together. This trillion dollar omnibus, whatever they do. Okay. It's not real. It's, they're stealing together. They're trying to heap treasure, treasures up by printing more fake and fake alchemy money or sorcerer's money. Or fool's gold using alchemy, taking paper and turn it into gold and silver. Okay. They're working together. For the last days, behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. They're not paying you what you deserve to be paid. You deserve to be paid with real gold and real silver. And the laborers crying out and the cries of them have reaped. Okay, let me see. The cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Let's get a different version so I can speak it out in English. <laughs> the people worked in your fields, but you did not pay them. They are crying out against you. They harvest your crops. Now, Lord, all-powerful, has heard their cries. Your life on earth was full of rich living. You pleased yourself. They were two or three years old. It's all about them. With everything you wanted. They never grew up and matured and, and became um, great, honest, fair, um, good leaders. You made yourself fat. Look how many of them are fat or getting liposuction or something. And an animal ready for the day of the slaughter. You show no mercy to good people. They were not against you, but you killed them. Be patient. Um, I want to go down here a little further. Well, I guess I won't skip that then. Brothers and sisters, be patient. The Lord will come. Be patient until that time. Look at the farmers. They have to be patient. They have to wait for their valuable crop to grow and produce a harvest. They await patiently for the first rain and last rain. You must be patient too. Never stop hoping. I, that's one thing I prayed. Lord, help me bring hope to these people. There is hope. All you have to do is repent and ask God to forgive you. Then he fills you and we can all... Take care of this together. Never stop hoping. The Lord is coming. He'll come within you with his spirit right now. Don't have to wait for the rapture or anything. Brothers and sisters, don't complain against each other. If you don't stop complaining, you will be judged and guilty because you're holding it, this, this hat. It's like sarcasm and things like that. You get mad. You get angry. You got to stop that. You're bringing people down around you. You need to bring people hope that God is the answer. He's going to help us. It's his laws they're breaking. And we have his power and authority to uh, bring judgment upon them. The judge is ready to come. Brothers and sisters, follow the example of the prophets who spoke for the Lord. They suffered many bad things, but they were patient. And they, we say that those who accepted their troubles with patience now have God's blessing. You've heard about Job's patience. You know that after all his troubles, the Lord helped him. And the Lord is going to help us. And it's very, very, very close. This shows that the Lord is full of mercy and is kind. Be careful what you say, brothers and sisters. It's very important for you not to use an oath when you make a promise. Don't use the name of heaven, earth, or anything else to prove what you say. When you mean yes, only say yes. When you mean no, say only no. Do so. Do this so that you will not be judged guilty. Now we have a covenant before God, before each other, in the Constitution and Declaration. And we have said and pledged with our signatures to our forefathers to uphold the laws of the Constitution. It says only gold and silver money. 
the corny Jack says, only gold, silver, and money. And we must keep this covenant. We must be loyal to each other and keep that covenant and uphold that law. But we need power and authority from God as mothers and fathers have power and authority to chastise their children and make sure they do the right thing. So we have power over others to make sure they're doing the right things. Well, we must be moved as uh, the unction of the Holy Spirit leads us. Okay, our... Are you having troubles? You should pray. Are you happy? You should sing. Are you sick? Ask the elders of the church to rub oil on you in the name of the Lord and pray for you. If such a prayer is offered in faith, it will heal anyone who is sick. The Lord will heal them and they, and if they have sinned, he will forgive them. So always teach, uh, tell each other the wrong things you have done. That's confession. <coughs> Tell our others, I've been fooled. I got into the con. I did not remain loyal to my country or to other people around me. I gave in and I used their alchemy money, their sorcerer's money. I did not use gold and silver according to the Constitution or according to Corny Jack, the 1792. And you tell each other, I bought into the Industrial Revolution. I didn't know I was enslaving everybody by buying a car. I didn't know I was enslaving everybody by having a construction company build my house. I didn't know I was enslaving everybody. But when we'd sin and go along with the industrial revolution and buy products, whatever it is, if somebody had to be forced to have, get a job, coerced, and had to be forced to go to public school and have to have their brains taken from them, have their common sense, well, then we're... We're part of it. So God says, come out from amongst them. That's satanic kingdom. It's the devil's kingdom. And you can see it bright as can be with this election. Okay. That's just bright as can be. That's their kingdom. That's Satan's kingdom. We, with Christianity, we have a different kingdom. Jesus is our king. And um, we got to claim that as we are going to be loyal to the Constitution. We're going to be loyal to our covenant we made before God and before each other. And our founding fathers were representing us when they signed those documents, independent Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And we have to remain loyal to our fellow men and to God. And say, God, with all that's in me, I will use gold and silver and I will not use their counterfeited money i will not use their fool's gold anymore and i won't be made a fool of anymore because i turn to you for wisdom and the bible says god will give you wisdom he'll pour it out on you he's wanting to give men wisdom but they just go god give me wisdom please give me your spirit come live with me live through me speak through me god's dying i mean <laughs> jesus died to do that I mean, he really did he wants to come and live with you and be reconciled unto you like back in the garden even before Adam fell. So tell each other the wrong things you have done. Then pray for each other so that do this so that God can heal you. He can heal our country. He can heal our lives. Anyone who lives the way God wants can pray and great things will happen. All of us. If we live the way God wants us to, we can pray and great things will happen. Elijah was just a person just like us. I heard somebody say Jesus was just like me and we just have to copy Jesus. We don't have to obey him. I said, you're wrong. He was God. But Elijah was just like you and me. And he prayed that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years, three and a half years. Then Elijah prayed that it would rain and the rain came down from the sky and the land grew crops again. My brothers and sisters, if any of you wanders away from the truth, like we've all wandered away from this coiny jack that establishes America as a sovereign kingdom with eternal rules and of law and order and right, which heaven itself has ordained. I'm quoting George Washington, the picture on the wall. I can't turn and show it to you. Just look it up and I'm sure you'll find the quote. It was said on April 30th, 1789. We ought to be no less persuaded that the propitious smiles of heaven can never be accepted 
on a nation, a kingdom that disregards the eternal rules of order and right, which heaven itself has ordained. There is a definite right and wrong. And in the Constitution, the Declaration says it's self-evident to everybody when we're not being brainwashed and pressured and beaten by these satanic spells on our mind all the time. And the Holy Spirit also, you need that power from God to break those spells off your mind, come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what the Bible says. Jesus will lead you to the truth. Trust him. He loves you. He did all that for you. He's God himself. He took all your sins on him. And so you can never be harmed. That's how much God loves us. That's how much Jesus loves us. My brother, if anyone wanders from the truth and somebody helps that person come back, remember this. Anyone who brings a sinner back from the wrong way will save that person from eternal death and cause many sins to be forgiven. I was really close to God today. And I kept thinking, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. When you have this truth in your mind, you know your end. It's like, wow, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Because you just know you did the right thing. If you do the right thing, and then you have eternal life. You just know you have eternal life. You save that other person from the eternal death and cause many sins to be forgiven. And so with, the reason I bring up James 5, it's woe to people who are counterfeiting money. And down here it's basically saying the root of all evil is the love of money or counterfeiting money. Whenever you see something evil, somebody's counterfeited money or didn't pay their laborers or didn't pay the workers or whatever or enslaved other men somehow okay then it says confess it tell everybody i did it i did it i bought this piano i bought this uh grandfather's clock my mom passed away she had all this money i bought this i'm like oh my gosh that wasn't my that was that at that plan piano doesn't belong to me that grandfather clock doesn't belong to me because i didn't pay for it i mean it was fool's money and so I'm asking God, how do I fix this one? <laughs> it's going to take a miracle to fix that one. I don't know. Uh, because they weren't paying their workers who built those items either. So <clears throat> that's what we got to pray for wisdom from God to fix these things. And ask God, show us what the right thing is. How do we do this? And actually Jesus has this power called the Holy Spirit. He starts to heal. And I start seeing things healed. And it's like it never happened. It's like, oh my gosh, it's healed. And the right thing was done. And that's what God does. Jesus brought healing. He had frankincense and mirth. He had gold and silver. Because he had a kingdom on this earth with the gold and the silver established him as a king. And he, God gave him power and authority. He could start to heal. And that's what frankincense and mirth does. And that's what this verse is all about. This chapter says that we confess to God he starts to heal his power just starts to heal it's just he he's an eternal law, law that God must obey if somebody's sorry and they ask forgiveness God has to forgive them now because Jesus died for us it's eternal life that the punishment for sin is death and blood must, must be shed and Jesus did that and so then and we were baptized we die with him we can't be punished or harmed we go to God we're reconciled unto God and then God heals us because it's one of his laws. It's one of his rules that he is eternal. It's like, it's what keeps the universe going without these, like gravity. It, it just has to happen. So you see how I said we have to repent of industrial revolution because that was witchcraft. It's wizardry. You might want to learn more because I can only do so much in a blog, right? I can't tell you the whole story of everything in a blog. This is kind of aggravating, <laughs> frustrating. He uses his hands and he, he uh, uses these pictures and behind him there's this music that goes throughout the whole thing. I'll let you have Prize winner, Niels Bohr, who very famously gave us the actual model for the atom, who stated, and I quote, everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. Going a step deeper. In this particular case, understand the whole picture. It may be wise. So it's excellent, excellent documentary. 
Uh, he's very thorough and he's very in depth. It's three hours, uh, 31 minutes long. Trey Smith, Noah, the truth is bigger than you thought. The journey begins. You will cover everything in three hours to catch up. Let's say you just became Christian. You don't know what's going on, what's happening. You're learning all in this three hour video. <laughs> and, but to me, it's kind of, I called it quirky. His hands, his face real close to the camera. And, but it, you'll learn so much. I'm telling you, it's very, very good. And you'll be, you'll receive all this information. He goes to all the different gods. He goes through time for, th from the beginning, from Noah, from Adam and Eve to Jesus Christ. He goes through uh, the dinosaurs. I mean, there's just so much he goes through history, but he uses the word of God and here's um, Genesis and um, he brings Christ into it all. He talks about all the different gods they've had the, th from South America to uh Samaria to China it's all the same thing it's the devil but then the good is God the truth is God there's a Samaria Semiramis the moon goddess and he goes through the one eye that we have on our dollar bill it, and this is from centuries old that one eye is always there it's always the devil of course he brings you out to Jesus resurrection, uh, the seventeenth of Nisan, the seventh month was the same day that uh, Noah I think came out of the ark. So we went through James, went through Amos, and it's about repenting from counterfeiting money. Oh, that's what he talked about. He talked about how there was a city called Atlantis, and uh, it did exist. And, you know, it's Lost City or Buried City of Atlantis. And um, they had all this technology we had before the fall, before the flood. So the technology, but he shows you how that technology was from demons. So um, you even find that NASA, they worship this god Pan. And they get their information from demons on how to go to space and rocket fuel and everything like that. Because you're going into the heavens and God, that's the throne of God. And Satan's desire is to be, take over the heavens. I mean, Satan wants to take over the heavens and replace God. And that's what you'll find your uh, evil people are doing on the earth today. But he goes through how they had technology. Probably more technology we did than we have. Like Noah's Ark was like perfectly made with down to the T. See, God has perfect math. And so the dimensions and stuff, I'm just looking at all these things, what he goes through. And the people who went before that have shown up, the giants on the earth. And he just goes through everything you possibly know in, in the quick. He doesn't give details on all these different areas. But anyways, the purpose is to say he does go and he talks about technology, how where they got it from, where the information came from. And God had to wipe it out in the flood. Because men become so evil with all this technology, they forget God. So you can't live without God. You have to have God in you to be good, to be moral, to have peace on the earth. Without God, you just destroy everything. We repent of counterfeiting money, replacing real money, gold and silver, with other metals, papers, plastics, cotton. God will forgive our sins. So God says, have just weights and balances, and we each are accountable before God to have silver and use it, and gold to use it. And that's why the U.S. Mint was established through the Coinage Act of 1792. And so... Um, we got to not use their uh, wizards and witchcraft money. This is John Wycliffe, 1330 through 1384. The Bible is for the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They've been hiding this information from all of us. God will answer your prayers. James 
5, 2. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth eaten, and your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them will be a witness against you. You shall eat your flesh as it, as if, as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for last days, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. 16. Confess your faults to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous may avail us much. All that is in James. Now I've got another word here. Um, oh, that's the end of that. Um, 11, November 7th. More revelation for the 7th. On See, I pray all day long, so I have added this to it later. God established Jesus, his king, and his kingdom by bringing wise kings from afar, worshiping him, and bringing him tithes in gold coins after the order of Melchizedek, not Levi. In the Old Testament, God made Levi the high priest. Uh, the family of Levi, Saul, his sons, will always be doing that. But then when Jesus came, he's not in the family of Levi. He's in, he comes after the order of Melchizedek. And you can learn more about Melchizedek if you watch that Noah movie or doc documentary. So we need to have gold and silver coins. So the people must honor God in tithes and offers, offerings and coins for the people to honor God in tithes and offerings. The people are commanded by God to have just weights and balances. Fiat, man-made currency, is unfair, it's unjust, and it's way for one group of people to steal everything on the whole globe. And that's what your petrodollar did. And that's how your gold back money. It stole everything from everybody. Gold back is horrible. If you don't see it in your hands. It's not real gold and silver. It's a con. It's fool's gold. All corruption stems from the love of money. That's a silver dime from 1916. That's a pack of. The Lord basically showed me, each of you, if you're on this earth, you want to live free, sound-minded, happy, healthy, you own your land, you have a well, you have a horse, you plow your field, you grow your own food, you you have your own milk supply, for your own cow, your own chickens. And all you need is one roll of silver dimes for the whole year. The book of Revelations, uh, chapter 6, 5 and 6. You can buy three um, flour sacks full of barley for a silver dime. That's how much a dime is worth a lot. A silver dime is worth a lot. Do you, any of you have silver earrings on? A silver ring? You paid two, three hundred dollars for that real silver. And that's about how much silver is in a silver dime. So it's worth a lot more than you think. They debased it in your mind. And now I'm saying we the people have our own monetary system already. It's right there in the Bible. It's right there in history. Gold and silver. PG here. Comment to someone trying to correct a word I received from God to liberate America from the central banks. I said don't fight God. Repent now. Read James chapter 5. After you have confessed the sin of counterfeiting money, been forgiven, having forgiven others for the same sin, because our Father says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, um, and are healed to do greater works than Jesus Christ by liberating your country like George Washington, who signed into law only gold and silver coins in the Coinage Act of 1792, according to Article 1, Section 10, Come back and talk to the Holy Spirit. You're not correcting me, but Jesus Christ. You told people to not counterfeit money. And tell others to do the same. Jesus never sinned. He never used anything but gold and silver coins. And do not be dogmatic. The letter of the law kills. God is a spirit. He forgives. He helps us. Um, these words are spirit and life to those who receive them as God's great love for them. And the whole idea is that you receive this, I'm free. I'm free. I don't have to pay their taxes. I don't have to pay anybody. I don't have to use their money. God's going to give me gold and silver. And be led by God on that subject. But this words are 
come to your mind and go, I'm free, nothing to harm me. See, they threaten to harm you, they threaten to take your land from you, they threaten to hurt you. Um, they threaten you in all these ways to put, build fear up in you if you don't go to America, basically, and get our petrodollar or the petro pound without any gold in it or silver in it. God is a spirit. These words are spirit and life to those who receive them as God's great love for them to set them free from central bankers' do demonic hold on their minds. Don't be a goat herded into a civil war. As I look at our social media, I see hints of those who have been planning a civil war for a long time. There's a movement out there, a free thought movement, I think, along with progressive. Progressive. Who else? Um, to call some more innocent people with sniper rounds 2,000 feet away from, or even from space. Don't go into a civil war. They can get you anywhere. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Everyone can be exactly pinpoint anytime. They want everybody on Twitter. They can pinpoint you. Certain government agencies were created to social engineer every feeling you have since you were born. When you have the Holy Spirit, you start listening to God. You have totally different feelings, totally different thoughts. Patrick out of here. I go by PG, Resistance Chick's mom. Why don't they punish themselves? Everybody asks that. Why aren't they being punished? Why don't they punish themselves? The seed of Satan. I have a covenant before God, before my fellow men, to obey the laws of nature and nature's God. That's in the Declaration of Independence. To obey the Bible. That's nature and nature's God. That's the Bible. I am new at this, but Jesus is teaching me to use my power and authority that Jesus has granted me by the infilling Dowed with the infinite Holy Spirit. When I use his power, powerful name, Jesus, as a child of God, as a saint, as an American, they do not punish themselves because they lack the power of God to even have self-discipline or self-control. All that comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They lack that. They lack the blessings of God for obedience to God, promised in Deuteronomy uh, 28. Okay, on Saturday, October 22nd, 2022, I wrote a blog called Government. All governments are accountable to God. All governments are accountable to God and to, must obey Him. We the people use the Bible, Bible, demand they obey the Ten Commandments. And I'm serious. Well, we end up um, being um, arbitrary rulers. We, the people, end up being arbitrary rulers. Oh, I feel like this would be the law day, or I feel like this is the law today, or I feel like this is the law today. We just heard from George Washington, the father of our nation, that there are eternal rules of order and right. We got to get that from God, and then we can stand on the laws of God. Unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain and build it. And this was the article, when government nudging is ethical. And as some bad guys wrote, say, it's okay for government to manipulate you, to lie to you, use demonic spells on you, to hurt you. And of course, we know that's wrong. They don't have that right. So that link will be in the blog. And this is for everybody. My son, if sinners entice you, if these counterfeiters, if these counterfeiters, and the, those who call themselves government and then they even incorporated themselves to make themselves some kind of legit or legal. They're no more legit or legal than fool's gold, okay? If these um, sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for innocent blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Proverbs 1, 10 through 11. Do not consent. And the Declaration of Independence says that governments get their power and authority from the consent of the people. We have to say, I do not consent. You have no power, no authority. I don't care what you put on paper. It's what's in a man that makes a difference, the laws. We Christians haven't had power and authority to protect people's rights because we have not repented of the root of all evil. 
We need to go back over all our, our lives and repent of ever using or being a co-conspirators of those who are counterfeiting money. Any bank. If you went to any bank, used any bank. We got to say, I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. A silver dime in the hands. A copy of the Constitution. A copy of James chapter 5. Tell it. Read it. Understand it. Acknowledge it is the very word of God. Know the Bible. After we've taught the laws, um, the Ten Commandments, we hold each other accountable before God and each other to obey it. Ten Commandments. This is how we can change a co country, basically. A copy of the Constitution, a copy of the Declaration, um, James 5. We just tell everybody, stop counterfeiting money. Okay. And you, you got to know and understand that's the word of God. And this is Martin Luther, 1483, 1547. If you watch Leah and Michelle, they're doing a Sunday series on Friday and every Sunday at 5. And they're going through, how do we become a free nation? How do we become the light? Um, sun on the hill, the light to the world. How do we become... This country, according to John Quincy Adams, was based in the purpose of America is to fulfill our Redeemer's mission on this earth to spread his kingdom on this earth. So if you're spreading God's kingdom, of course, you're making sure everybody has the legitimate, fair, honest treatment of real gold and silver as their money. <clears throat> but anyways, that heart, there's whole... Their whole uh, Sunday series is going back to the past of two great men who spent time alone and had their lives burned at the stake or lost their lives or someone like Martin Luther who knew nothing could harm him. He, he, Jesus was revealed to him and gave their lives. And all that built up to where we got a free country called America. Unless I conceive by proofs from the scriptures or by plain and clear reasons and arguments I can and will not retract for it is neither safe nor wise to do anything against your conscience here I stand I can do no other God help me amen so you thought George Washington came up with the God help me here Martin Luther say God help me we all have to say God help me and he does immediately as soon as we call for help live by the Ten Commandments of God Almighty, it's every child's right to know morals, right from wrong, according to God, to know what a very good, wholesome, healthy, happy life really is. It is obeying God's loving spirit within them, to know they have the right to own land, work for themselves off that land, to provide for themselves. And you don't even have to buy land. We're all creatures on this earth. And every fox, every dog, every horse has right to have land. So does every human being without paying for it. You just don't take it if somebody else has already claimed it. You know, there. John Locke talks about the common land. There should be common land. The government doesn't own all the land. I'm just telling you, they don't own anything. They're, it's illegal for them to own land, actually. That's not what their purpose is. Their purpose is to protect the people and their right to own land so they can live independent lives like I was just telling you about. Own land, work for themselves off the land and provide for themselves and to farm. There are no income taxes, no property taxes, but to obey God. We cannot be in debt. It's against the law to be in debt because debt is slavery. Jesus, uh, through Paul, said, Owe man nothing but to love him and not to be in debt. So the Founding Fathers never legalized debt in this country because that would be legalizing sin. To know God's love and power God has given them so the government can't be on the debt to the Federal Reserve for all that money. It's totally legal. A silver dime and any other things in each hand with the knowledge can, with the unity of every American, thwart the coming catastrophe. So to know God's love and power, God has given them. So everybody know God's love and power. He's given them a silver dime and other things. The constitution I wrote earlier in each hand with knowledge 
understanding it, and with unity of every American can thwart the coming catastrophe. We cannot just read the Bible, but obey it. James uh, 5, repent of every time you, we used, allowed others to use, encourage the enslavement of your fellow man by encouraging, courage, um, to, by encouraging people, uh, telling them they should go get a job and use counterfeit money. James 5, woe to the rich whose money is cankered, rust, and counterfeited. You have fattened yourself to the day of slaughter. James also said, confess this sin, this crime, and ask God to forgive you for it. He will heal you and everyone else who upholds their end of the deal, the covenant, the contract, the constitution. We all promised to only use gold and silver coins. And there's James 5. 3. So I'm saying, um, repent every time you encouraged the enslavement of your fellow man by encouraging others that they should um, go get a job. I did it. You should do it too. You should go get a job and use counterfeit money. Well, we got to repent of every time we pressure somebody to do that, especially women to leave their children and abandon their uh, role as mothers. Children need mothers. Mothers need your children. Just There's no round way around it. Going to court. When, a, when in court, always use the Bible. The Founding Fathers established the Bible as a final authority when there are arbitrary decisions being argued. Jesus is the mediator, not, not the judge. He stands as a minister of justice for God. Not above God, but as all men servitude under God. So a judge in a courtroom is not above God, but he is in servitude under God. We all are. This way, men are equal, having unalienable rights given to them by their maker, their creator, their savior, Jesus Christ. This uh, proven through history, moral laws, a principle that will protect the goodwill, health, and wholesomeness of all the people. So the Bible is proven through history. The moral laws and principles of the Bible will protect the goodwill and health and wholesomeness of all the people that protect the goodwill and health and wholesomeness of the people. The, the Bible is proven through history. It's morals, laws, moral laws and principles that protect people. That's why we have the Bible. That's why God wrote it to protect us, keep us safe. And all men must submit to it. So before you ever go to court, you want to study this. So I'm saying the judge stands as a minister of justice for God. He's not above God, but as all men, he's servitude under God. The number one crime, the King of England in the Declaration of Independence, that we were saying we're breaking off from the king of England because he's breaking all these moral laws and moral principles. And we're saying that the king, he refused to ascend to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public go good. And that's why I'm clarifying this up here. The Bible is proven throughout history. Its morals and principles protect the goodwill and health and wholesomeness of people. And the king was refusing to do that. All laws must be most wholesome for the public good, free will and goodwill. So people don't lose faith in God and their minds be broken and injured and broken hearted. Then they start to sin and, and be corrupted. These two, this here, this quote uh, from John Quincy Adams is also... I'll be reading this here. This is a longer one version. By John Quincy Adams, July 4th, 1837. Why is it, friends and fellow citizens, that you are here assembled? Why is it that entering upon the sixth, 62nd year of our national existence, you have honored with an invitation to address you from this place? 
a fellow citizen of a former age, bearing in the records of his memory the warmth and the vivid affections which attached him at the distance of a full half century to your town and to your forefathers, then the cherished associates of his youthful days, why is it that next to the birthday of the Savior of the world, your most joyous and most venerated festivals returns on this day? And why is it that among the swarming myriads of our population, thousands and ten thousand among us, are standing under the dictate of religious principles from the commemoration of that birthday of him who brought life and immortal immorality, immortality to light. Yet, that means eternal life to light. That you're an immortal being. You'll live forever. You can either live in hell or heaven. <laughs> Yet, unite with all their brethren of this community year after year in celebrating the birthday of the nation. And then he goes on to say, Is it not that in the chain of human events, the birthday of a nation is indissolubly linked to the birthday of the Savior? That it formed a leading event in the progress of the gospel of dispensation. That it, is it not that the Declaration of Independence first organized the social compact on the foundation of the Redeemer's mission on earth? That it laid the cornerstone of human government upon the precept, first precepts of Christianity. He would know he was there. And I put a link to that. I think I'll stop here and come back and finish up. So we'll carry on with uh, John Quincy Adams. This is PG signing off. Let's go.